Let's begin by telling you that the organized labor comprising the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress has reiterated its May 31st, 2024 ultimatum to the federal government to meet all its demands, which includes implementation of a new national minimum wage and reversal of the hike in electricity tariff. That's followed a Monday emergency meeting of the National Executive Council of the NLC and TUC in response to the pressing national issues affecting Nigerian workers. Among the issues discussed by the labor leaders was a persistent non-compliance with 2019 National Minimum Wage Act by some state governments. In a resolution jointly signed by NLC President Joe Ajero and TUC leader Festus Osifo, the labor union also directed its members in Anambra State to mobilize for industrial action in the event that the state government did not meet the demands of workers by May 23, 2024. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has called for a truce and River State political crisis, asking Governor Sumnalaye Fubara and his predecessor Yesom Wiki to work together. Jonathan made the call on Monday during the flag off of the Trans Calabari Road, describing the incessant battles between governors and predecessors and the political tension in the state, River State, as worrisome. Our correspondent Bernard Akede has been keeping up with the situation in Port Harcourt, the state capital, and now reports. People of Bakana community in River State excited to see former President Goodluck Jonathan at the flag of ceremony of the Trans Calabari Road, a road which the people say, when completed, will bring development to the community. I'm a bona fide child of Bakana. In fact, this place has been something else. The insecurity, the way of going on. You know, sometimes you prepare, you get to the water side. They say there is lockdown. You couldn't go to your community. But right now, with this road, economic development will rot into our communities. So, the number of years they stayed promising us severally that land uh, road will come, you know, severally. That is their normal uh, campaign. But today, May we are over happy. Besides just addressing the benefits of the road to be constructed, the former president sees the opportunity to address the lingering political crisis in the state between the sitting governor, Similai Fubara, and his predecessor, Nesom Wike, who is the current FCT minister. Honorable Mr. Nesom Wike and Governor Sim Fubara must work together for developing the lands and the people of River State. The tension will not help us. River State is very critical in this country. River State is the heart of the Niger Delta. If River State is destabilized, the whole Niger Delta will be destabilized. And it will not end within the Niger Delta alone, because I'm from this part of the country, and I know how the system works. And we wouldn't want any crisis in River State. Recently, some commissioners loyal to Wike have resigned for the second time, while lawmakers faithful to the FCT minister have intensified their brawl with Fubara. But members of the Elders Forum in the state have praised the governor for remaining focused and continuing with projects like this despite the distractions. They have decided that in spite of the issues around him, he has to continue with the governance of the state and continue with the things he was voted to do. He has to go on implementing projects and commissioning them. According to the indigenous of the community, the benefits of this road to be constructed are numerous. And their message to the governor is that he overlooks political distraction and continues such good works, road constructions, and other infrastructural projects, so that at the end of his tenure, he can look back and celebrate the success of his achievements. In Port Harcourt for New Central, I'm Bernard Akedi. State, the chairman of the opposition All Progressives Congress Party in River State, Chief Tony Okocha, has accused the state governor, Sminalaye Fubara, of being part of the problem in the state's polity. In an exclusive interview with News Central Television, Okocha applauded Fubara's decision to probe governors in the state but questioned how the governor plans to carry out the undertaking, saying that he was part of the governance he intends to probe. The other thing again is that I do not also know how 
the governor today, if his, if his intention is to probe the immediate past governor, how he can possibly absorb himself from complicities. He was uh, 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 director of finance and administration, government house, that's DFA. He was permanent secretary in charge of finance, government house. He was uh, accountant general of the state. And he's talking about uh, financial malfeasance. So how will he, I mean, be completely absorbed? Either one way or the other, his name will be mentioned. Earlier, Associate Professor of Public Law, River State University, Richard Walker was on the news and shared his thoughts on this. Remember that this um, former president has also transacted with some of the parties involved and uh, did not have a good experience. All the same, it's a very good thing for anybody to be able to broker peace uh, between these parties because on the long run, River State suffers for their inability to find uh, a common ground. However, I think that peace must be built on justice and on the law. Otherwise, that peace will run the risk of running into the kind of murky waters uh, that we have run into in River State now. There is nothing difficult about officers, public officers, performing their functions and focusing on their functions. There is no room. I, I do not see how it is an option that um, an unconstitutional interest should become a subject of negotiation between the constitutional state and such interest. So I think we need to find peace that enables parties to respect themselves and that is built around the law. Representatives Committee on Finance is threatening to sanction some agencies which have refused to appear before the committee to render account of their revenue profile and accurate remittances to government. The vice chairman of the committee, while speaking at the resumed hearing of the committee's revenue monitoring exercise in Abuja, says that it will compel the Accountant General of the Federation to block the accounts and ensure they abide by the dictates of the committee. He says the eight agencies were invited and only two appeared. Another two sought the permission of the House to appear at another date, while four refused to communicate with the committee or make an appearance. We expect to have these agencies, we're going to give them letters by tomorrow to appear. Lagos International Trade Fair Complex, uh, National Procurement Commission, National Exam Examination Council, and National Inland Waterways Authority. I'm going to repeat, we expect them to cause appearance by tomorrow. Lagos International Trade Fair Complex, National Procurement Commission, National Examination Council, and National Inland Waterways Authority. If by tomorrow these agencies fail to appear before this committee by 12 o'clock tomorrow, the committee will resort to take appropriate actions. In fact, we can even take the decision of uh, authorizing Office of the Accountant General to block their accounts. We're doing 50% now, we can block their accounts 100% because we will not take it lightly with any agency. Armed soldiers have denied traders and artisans at the popular Banex Plaza in Abuja. Access to your shops and business premises in reaction to a clash over the weekend, which saw a mob of traders and artisans beat up four soldiers. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Bagudu, who was at the scene, tells us more. Traders and artisans at the plaza attacked four army personnel, beating them to stupor over disagreements surrounding the return of an iPhone. In a swift reaction to the event, the army sealed off shops and spaces at the plaza, stopping the traders and artisans from conducting their businesses. People are, 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 are walking to and fro, not doing anything. Especially the plaza helps a lot of youths. It helps them not to go into crime. The businesses going on inside the plaza helps guys not to go into crime. There are a lot of things that the plaza is helping a lot of guys to do. On Saturday, a military man came to buy something in our plaza. I don't really know what happened, but one of a sudden, the man said the phone they sold to him is not good. In the process of changing the phone, they had an argument with a shop owner, and they started fighting, and they beat the military man. The military man went back and packed his gang and came. Now the plaza is closed. Nothing is moving. Everywhere is stuck down. They say the action by the army is now affecting them 
as they can no longer conduct their businesses as normal. Yeah, it's where I'm getting my food to eat. I get money to feed myself, feed my family. But right now, everywhere is shut down. I pray, made everything settled. But the old banners that is not even involved, that's not where it even happened. It happened at the new banners, but they've shut even the old banners down. So, but you know, I'm still blaming the, I'm blaming the people of the banners for beating a military. You don't touch military. And I don't have anywhere to sell or do my business again because the plaza is shut down. While government is grappling with the reality of unemployment in the country, it is expected that FCT administration will nip the issue in the board and return these youths back to their sources of income for peace to continue to reign in the FCT. In Abuja for New Central, I'm Emmanuel Bagudu. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, yes, some week, has revealed that about $53 million was saved during the renegotiation of the Abuja Metro Line Rehabilitation Project and training of its staff by the China Civil Engineering Company. The Minister, during a final inspection of completed works at the Metro Line Terminal and its substations ahead of the official commissioning and flagging off of commercial operations, says that all adjoining roads to the terminals have now been completed. Our correspondent, Emadin Uri. It was a final inspection of the Abuja Metro Line ahead of the commissioning of the rehabilitation of the project and the launch of commercial operations. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yinson Wike, inspected the completed works at the stations and expressed satisfaction at work done on ground, especially the completion of access routes to the various terminals. We're happy with the work that has been done, and we believe Nigerians will be happy, particularly the residents of the F City. Like you said, like we always say, without the access routes to the various stations, then they have no need for the metal line. Because how would people from the various communities access the stations when there are no access routes? But well, thank God we have seen the access routes, so you can just take your car back in each of the stations you want and then board the train, go to wherever you want to go and come back and still take your vehicle and go back to wherever you live. So we're happy, very, very happy. Reacting to questions on the cost of the rehabilitation and the entire project, he says that the renegotiation process saved the federal government over $50 million. Before we came, that the federal government approached the debt from Abdusayla put $128 million for the training of our people, for CC to train them for 29 months. And that we said, no, that's very exorbitant. And we renegotiated with CCECC. And now it has been brought down to $75 million for the training of our people for 29 months. We have saved for the government not less than 50, uh, 53 million US dollars. He commended President Bola Tinubu for supporting efforts to get the metro line back to operational capacity. In Abuja for New Central, I am Amadin Uyi. As crucial as the agricultural sector is to the overall development of any state or nation, stakeholders have been urged to shift your swords of destruction of farmlands and attacks on livestock as the farming season draws very close. And this call was made by the commander of Operation Safe Heaven, Major General Abdul Salam Abubakar, when he declared open a one-day seminar for successful farming season in Saga, local government area of Kaduna State. Our correspondent, Chizoba Anyongu, was there and tells us more. Inspection of the quarter guard by the commander of Operation Safe Haven, Major General Abdul Salam Abubakar, signaled the commencement of activities for this event in Sanga local government area of Kaduna State. It was the general's maiden visit to the Operation Safe Haven's forward operation base in Sanga since assuming office as commander of the operation and general officer commanding 3 Amod Division of the Nigerian Army. This event, which pulled stakeholders from various sectors, aims at ensuring major triggers of attacks and reprisals are brought to an end, especially as farmers prepare for this year's farming season. 
the seminar, geared towards a successful farming season, is of utmost importance as it would ensure safety and prosperity in the various communities, not only in Santa local government area, but all the other environs around Santa local government area. The next port of call was the venue for the one-day lecture for farmers and herders to go about their lawful businesses without any fear of harassment or attacks. Let's settle our problem amicably. Now, if we are able to live like this, whatever tribe you come from, whichever religion you practice, God himself will be happy that we live at peace with one another. He will bless our land the more, and he will bless the works of our hands. Let's allow the farmers to go back to their, their farms, and let us allow the, the cattle rearers to have their way too. The, the cattle rearers should not should not tamper with the, I mean, with, with, with the farms or the, farm, uh, the, the farmers. And the farmers should not tamper with the root of the cattle rearers. Highlights of the event include the commissioning of refurbished combat motorcycles and troops outpost accommodation and the presentation of educational materials to pupils of some schools in Sangha. Done and dusted with this peace summit here, it is expected that participants here would have learned the essence of tolerance, patience and respect for one another if there will be peace in this community and the state at large. From Sangha, local government area of Kaduna State, Chizoba Anyowe, reporting for New Central. The convoy of Sheriff Oborowori, Governor of Delta State, South South Nigeria, has been involved in an auto accident. The incident occurred on Monday evening when the convoy suspected to have been returning from Wari to Saba immediately after the Federal College of Education Technical Ibusa Road opposite the GSM Steel Company in Asaba. No casualty was recorded, but a source informed newsmen that some persons were injured, including one of the orderlies and the driver. An eyewitness who pleaded anonymity said the cause of the accident was a result of a burst tire while on motion. Okwama community returnees in Ewu Robo Kingdom Delta State have recovered an octogenarian from the bush after 59 days without food, water and shelter. The community was under the Nigerian soldier siege for six weeks following the killing of 17 soldiers. New Central's correspondent, Austin Azu, who paid a visit to the community, reports on how the returnees are picking up the pieces of their lives again, despite government's quest to relocate them to the IDP camp in Ewu Grammar School, traditional headquarters of the Ewu Urubo Kingdom. ...of the military siege on Okwama community over the killing of 17 soldiers and the military repriser. The Delta State Governor broke the news of military withdrawal from the crisis zone of Okwama community. This is a two-story building. It belongs to Reverend Father Sylvester Enoma. Despite the government's announcement of the internally displaced persons camp for Okwama indigents at Ewu Grammar School, traditional headquarters of the Ewu Robo Kingdom, the people insisted on not relocating from their ancestral home. The only resting place for the returnees remains this worship building where they stay. This is where they cook their food. The only source of water for drinking, cooking, washing and bathing is this river. Not with them by the current situation, they still make our time for social life. <laughs> On a walk around the destroyed community, the new central crew came across an autogenarian who was recovered from the community bush by the returnees after staying 59 days without water and food. <laughs> Why soliciting for assistance to restore this woman's life, one of the community leaders revealed what was next for the woman. For two months plus, without food or water, it is the Lord's doing. So now that we have found her, we want, it's our plan now to take her to hospital where we can take care of her 
we call on our children so that all many Nigeria, they can come to our rescue for this plan we have for this woman because we need this woman to survive. And she can talk. So that's why we believe that if we take her to hospital, she will survive and she will live a better life again. These returnees are hopeful that very soon this phase will be over and their community rebuilt. In Okwama, Delta State for News Central, Austin Azu. Nigeria's Federal Ministry of Health has commenced the review of the 2019 National Health Management Information System. The ministry says that this is aimed at identifying the gaps and challenges visible in the system, incorporate new data elements, and remove redundant data that hinders accurate and timely collection of data for the nation's health sector. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Bagudu, tells us more. The National Health Management Information System provides comprehensive information for evidence-based planning and decision-making in Nigeria's health sector. It is supposed to be reviewed biannually to update the document based on new trends and current realities. The National Health Management Information System, and this is a system that collects, collates, and reports uh, service statistics to the national reporting platform and the whole system is holistic in that it combines both the report the routine system and then the survey based indicators it's a system that is helping the country to ensure that it has relevant data to ensure that sons are taking real time for example if there are outbreaks you need to have surveillance data if surveys are done you need to have that so that even as a country we can report to ourselves and to the international community of what that is not alone so we are in the Africa region and we're also in the global space. So we need to have right information at the right time. The National Health Management Information System is currently being reviewed with the partnership of international non-governmental organizations working on health thematic areas in Nigeria. What facilities do they have? What support do they have? What logistics do they have? How are partners being um, brought together to bring this information? So a lot has been done, but we can always be better than what we're having. For instance, as we're talking now, we have in some places, we are still talking about um, data capturing tools on paper. Why are we not digitalizing everything? So these are some of the things that can be done to improve the quality of data that we have in Nigeria. The exercise is expected to take five days and will resume after another two years. In Abuja for New Central, I'm Emmanuel Bagudu. Some traders and market women in Benin City, the Edo State capital, have taken to the streets to protest against what they call the effects of evil unions and bad market leadership. The protesters, led by the president of the Traders' Welfare Union of Nigeria, took to the Secretariat of the Nigerian Union of Journalists to register their displeasure. Our correspondent, Joshua Imarai, has details. The protesters are demanding an end to the abandonment of bond markets by state government and an end to the hijacking of the markets by individuals claiming to be members of the market union. They say the unions are evil and have been perpetuating artificial scarcity, causing hardship for traders and consumers alike. Evil union, bad market leaders, they are causing artificial scarcity in our market in the state. When they succeed to compel you to join their union, they give you time to come to market. That is why today, when you come to market, it's not everybody that is selling carry that you will say there. It's not everybody that is selling fish said see there. They share people that will come to the market, causing artificial scarcity. We carry food from a doorstep to Lagos. Food is more cheaper in Lagos than a doorstep. The protesters are calling on the state government to intervene and address their grievances. The problem that brought us majorly to this place is that of a Kyosa market. We are in pain, sir. We are in pain. They promised that they are going to be that market for just four months. Immediately, it was uh, three months plus. We have not even seen any sign. We are getting information that the place has been sold. We are not getting anything any longer because things are cost. We are not getting benefit from what we are buying any longer because the rate at which we buy it is on the high side. No profit any longer. So we are begging the government issue, please come to our aid. Bring the, the let's say, vegetable down to a market. If you didn't join their union to register with uh, 150,000 and some uh, crate of malt and beer and uh, wine. 
Yes, everything. all everything. everything. So that's why that's the high cost of things. The Nigerian Union of Journalists expressed solidarity with the protesters, calling on the state government to listen to their demands and take urgent action to address their grievances. Now you have also brought out some of the reasons why this hike is everywhere in those states. You have also let us know that there are middle men and women who are siphoning bias by ensuring that articles and wares that are being sold in marketplaces are of the high side. Therefore, that is why we choose to take this protest. So we support you. I want to assure you that we will report it accurately. The protesters are demanding an end to bad market leadership. They say they want justice and fairness in the management of market in Benin City. In Abuja for New Central, I am Joshua Imarai. The pressure male children face in their families and society accounts for some of the negative res results that emanate from them at different times. This is said to be part of the reason many men find it difficult to react appro appropriately when something happens. In this report, our correspondent Chiwo Gili takes a look at the effects of having a badly raised boy in the society. Child, a special species in the African context who must have the strength and capacity to weather every storm and be in control of situations. He, like the girl child, experiences hurt, yet the society abhors it when he shows or shares emotions. Showing my weaknesses in public. I don't like showing my pains in public. They should be educated to the point that they know what it means to care. They know what it means to express that I'm not feeling very well and I need, I need attention. You look at your boy, oftentimes you find them going through pains, but they can't express. This unfortunate situation only translates to making the boy child cold, withdrawn and expressionless in the future. I'll be emotional, but I wouldn't know how to express it, you know, uh, because the women in the Alacrina Grand is very close to tears. They can easily express. Kingsley Okum, a journalist, shares his experience growing up. Much was taught to the ladies about about puberty, uh, but none of that was discussed to me. Even when I started seeing pubic hair, I got amazed and I was really surprised. At some point, I became very frightened, but nobody really educated me. Although some young people say they enjoy a balanced upbringing these days, there are still men whose character depicts that their upbringing could have been better. They had the parents who to a caring, understanding, and then they were ready to guide you. That's at least any way you make mistakes, they were there to correct you. A boy child advocate, Mrs. Onye Raf Wanchuku, says parents ought not to create a dichotomy in sharing responsibilities for their children. First, they are human beings and they must coexist. And if you begin to show more love to the girl or, or you, are beco you become more interested in developing the girl child, who is going to live with that girl child? It's not the boy. So you end up uh, bringing up beasts. Uh, most of the things I learned was within uh, the association in my neighborhood. So I, I wouldn't say I had a formal information about being a boy or growing up as a boy. I don't think they receive the kind of training they should get because of the way some parents are careless. If we must have a society that is blessed with physically and mentally capable men, then the upbringing of the boy child must be taken as serious as that of the girl child to reduce incidences of failed marriages and vices such as cultism, kidnapping, drug abuse and internet fraud. In Omar Hefonyu Central, Shinwe Ugili. The news continues in West Africa where Niger and the United States have announced they had reached a disengagement agreement with a reading of the joint statement aired on Niger's public television, Tele Sahel, which also showed members of the U.S. and Niger military meeting. The director of external relations and military cooperation for Niger said it's therefore agreed that these withdrawals will end on September 15, 2024, at the latest. However, both sides added that the withdrawal would not affect ties relating to developments in Niger. Niger has been the key partner for the U.S. in combating insurgents in the Sahel region who have caused significant loss of life and displacement. La Défense Nationale du Niger et le Département de la Défense des États-Unis ont trouvé un accord de désengagement pour effectuer le retrait des forces américaines. 
Il est ainsi convenu que ce désengagement se terminera au plus tard le 15 septembre 2024. Les délégations ont également établi des procédures pour faciliter l'entrée de sortie du personnel américain, y compris les autorisations de survol et atterrissage pour les vols militaires. Le Niger et les États-Unis s'engagent à un dialogue diplomatique continu. Residents of Kinshasa, the capital of DR Congo, have reacted a day after the army said it had thwarted a coup attempt. The residents are asking questions on how assailants can storm a minister's house without the authorities being informed. Clashes were reported between men in military uniform and guards of a local politician at a politician's house on Tinshati Boulevard, about two kilometers from the presidential palace and where some embassies are also located. Two police officers and one of the attackers were killed in a shootout that started around 4.30 a.m. Parce que la façon où euh, ces opérations étaient opérées, euh, je ne pense pas que dans un état souverain, euh, dans, en plein capital, en plein centre-ville, que des assaillants peuvent prendre d'assaut la maison d'un ministre ou euh, je moi, le palais de la nation sans pourtant que les autorités ne soient informées. Nous, nous savons qu'ils sont venus nous attaquer et dans leur fuite, on apprend qu'ils sont arrivés au palais de la nation. Nous n'avons pas d'explication pour ça. Ce que nous ne comprenons pas, c'est comment ces gens ont pu s'organiser, atteindre ces quartiers hautement sécurisés et partir jusqu'au palais des nations, s'amuser. Et bon, heureusement, à la fin, ils ont été neutralisés. Et donc, nous déplorons et nous condamnons avec grande énergie cette attaque ignoble qui a mis en danger la vie et des policiers et surtout qui vit. South Africa's highest court has banned Jacob Zuma from running from parliament. In, the next, in next week's general election, the Constitutional Court ruled that his 15-month prison sentence for contempt of court disqualified him. Zuma was convicted in 2021 for refusing to testify at an inquiry investigating corruption during his presidency, which ended in 2018. He has been campaigning under the banner of the newly formed Omoto Wisizwe MK Party after falling out with the governing African National Congress, ANC. MK Secretary General Sile Ungube said the party was disappointed with the ruling, but it would not affect its campaign. The, the results have been uh, announced on the court where they said that uh, President Jacob Zuma must not be on the list going to parliament. But Jacob Zuma is still, I'm emphasizing, Jacob Zuma is still a party leader. Jacob Zuma is on the ballot paper of MK party, and then people are still going to vote Jacob Zuma in numbers. We feel vindicated and disappointed, but we are happy that Jacob Zuma is still the leader of the party. He still dictates in MK party what needs to happen. But we are resolute. Um, we will await um, direction from our leadership. Okay, what but as members of the party, we're very disappointed. We, we're very happy with the outcome of the court. It has provided the clarity that we sought uh, when, when we applied to become amicus in this case. Uh, the court has reaffirmed that contempt of court, and particularly of the constitutional court, is a very serious crime. Thousands of Iranians walked somberly through the streets on Tuesday for the funeral procession of President Ebrahim Raisi and seven members of his entourage who were killed in a helicopter crash. Waving Iranian flags and portraits of the late president, the mourners set off from a central square in the northwestern city of Tabriz, where Raisi was headed when his helicopter crashed on Sunday. Meanwhile, Iranians in Tehran have expressed their sorrow over the passing of President Ebrahim Raisi, who died in a helicopter crash in a western mountain region of the country. Inshallah, 
جبران بشه ما انتظار داریم از رهبر معظم انقلاب اسلامی ایران کسی رو انتخاب کنه که انشالله برای مردم کار کنه و طبقات ضعیف رو درک کنن همین یعنی اینا رو باید انشالله یه برنامه ریزی باشه که یه آدم جاگوزینی باشه که در حد قواره آقای رئیسی باشه من به عنوان یک ایرانی برای کشورمون رئیس جمهورمون خیلی زحمت کشیده و برای شهادت سر خیلی ناراحت هستیم واقعا از ته دل میگم که خیلی ناراحت هستیم که رئیس جمهورمون برای کشورمون که انقدر زحمت کشیدن بینمون نیستن تو رئیسی واقعا خدمت گذار خوبی برای مردم بوده قشنگ میدونستن که درد جامعه چیه درد ملت چیه میخواستن اینا رو رفع روجو کنن ولی متاسفانه دیگه عجل مهلتشون نداد و متاسفانه به شهادت رسیدن با اینکه در حین خدمت به مردم هم به شهادت رسیدن در. At least one person has died and 22 others injured after a deflagration at a gas station in Lima, Peru's Ministry of Health reported. According to the police, the incident may have been caused by the explosion of a gas tanker. Bueno, después de la explosión que ha afectado aproximadamente dos cuadras a la redonda, tenemos un, una cuenta de un fallecido y aproximadamente 40 heridos. Es en el mismo tanque, es un camión abastecedor de combustible de GNB que tienen tres balones, cuatro balones de cisterna. Dos de ellos han salido por la explosión, han salido impactando las viviendas continuas. Y dos de ellos, una de ellos todavía sigue emitiendo gas, por eso que todavía lo ponen. Toda mi puerta, toda mi cochera, mi vehículo, todo está destrozado. Mi casa se ha caído, toda la pared se ha caído. A road blockade by activists remain determined to guarantee withdrawal of an electoral reform bill as they refuse to abandon the roadblocks they have paralyzed the Pacific archipelago for a week. The activist group organizing the protests in the French rural territory, Field Action Coordination Cell, said in a statement on Monday, blockades would continue, urging prote protesters to use a peaceful approach. Roadblocks were making it difficult to supply food to the stores in several areas and provide secure travel for medical staff. Les gens qui ont des minoritaires, s'ils font passer ces textes au Congrès de Versailles, nous on est foutus. C'est ça qu'ils ne comprennent pas là-bas. Les gens ont des minoritaires chez nous. Voilà les armes. Voilà. Ça, 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 et puis en face, ils ont des fusils ah, longue portée. Et tu, tous, nos, tous nos petites soeurs, nos petits frères ici dans le quartier. C'est la milice avec la police. Même. Et puis on va leur dire que nous on est armés. Voilà. Armés avec ça là. C'est ça l'arme à nous. Pas de fusil. Parce que manque les gens qui circulent là Ben là, ça fait une semaine déjà qu'on est sur le terrain. Depuis lundi. Jusqu'à là, c'est mardi. Puis voilà, il y a les passants, ils sont habitués. Il y en a qui passent avec le pain, ils nous déposent du pain, de l'eau, boissons hygiéniques. Du coup, c'est tranquille. Il y a les habitués déjà, ils nous connaissent ici sur les barrages. And for business news, let's connect with the business desk. The debt management office has sought the support of primary dealer market makers to raise financing for Nigeria's domestic debt repayment. This was noted in a meeting on Monday in Lagos with the primary dealer market makers in the Nigerian securities market. Patience Oniha, Director General Debt Management Office, noted that the meeting continued from a previous strategic meeting in which the federal government's borrowing plan had been outlined. She also noted that the DMO had raised part of the finance for both the domestic debt and ways and means borrowing, which they intended to complete. New domestic borrowing in the 2024 budget of 6 trillion naira has been reduced to 4.5 trillion naira and out of the 7.3 trillion naira that the National Assembly approved for securitization, 4.905 trillion naira has been raised. Away from that, Ivory Coast, the world's leading cocoa producer, has become the best rated sovereign in sub-Saharan Africa with foreign debt outstanding surpassing South Africa. 
Both nations were rated BB by S&P Global Ratings, but Ivory Coast's outlook was upgraded to positive due to improving debt profile, while South Africa's outlook remained stable. The yield on Ivory Coast's debt maturing in 2028 dropped 13 basis points to 7.09% as of noon in London on Monday, the lowest since April 15. South Africa's dollar debt due in 2030 had a yield of 6.9%, down from over 8.5% in October. Samir Gadil, head of Africa strategy at Standard Chartered, noted Ivory Coast's impressive rating trajectory over the past decade reflected its economic turnaround while many other African nations have faced downgrades. Now, the Finance Bill 2024 in Kenya faces opposition from industry players, including the Edible Oil Manufacturers Association of Kenya, Associated Battery Manufacturers, Kenya Bankers Association, Association of Kenya Insurers and Digital Lenders. The tax, which would impose 25% excise duty on vegetable oils, could lead to a significant increase in cooking oil prices, making it unaffordable for many Kenyan households. The Edible Oil Manufacturers Association highlighted that the excise duty would have a cascading effect on other essential products. They project that the price of a standard loaf of bread that's about 400 grams could rise from 70 Kenyan shillings to about 80 Kenyan shillings. A long bar of soap from 180 Kenyan shillings to about 270 Kenyan shillings. And margarine that's uh, of uh, the 250 gram category from 160 Kenyan shillings to 300 Kenyan shillings. This would significantly impact the cost of living for millions of Kenyans. And that's all on Business News. We still have more stories to come your way. To stay with us. The eighth edition of Nigeria's National Youth Games has been scheduled to be held in Asaba, the Delta State Capital, south south of Nigeria, from 10th to 20th of September 2024. Officials of the Ministry of Sports and the Management Committee of Delta State Sports Commission met in, in Asaba to conclude arrangements for the 8th National Youth Games 2024. The date was effectively chosen into the academic calendar of schools in Delta State and the forthcoming Olympics and Paralympics Games. It is noteworthy to mention that the organizers of the National Youth Games will be using selected schools' hostels to accommodate the 5,000 athletes during the Games. The Stephen Keshi Stadium, Asaba, which is already receiving some attention, is the main venue for the Games. Delta State is the defending champion of the National Youth Games. Russian Premier League outfit Spartak Moscow have announced the departure of Victor Moses from the club. Moses made his final appearance for the Moscow Giants in the 3-1 victory over Rubin Kazan on Sunday. Spartak Moscow announced his departure on social media page. The 33-year-old initially joined the Red and Whites on loan from Premier League giant Chelsea during the 2020-21 season. The move was made permanent the following season. He scored nine goals and 70 league appearances for the former Russian Premier League champions. Former UFC flyweight John Herrera has died at the age of 33. The Colombian reportedly died following a motorcycle accident external in Tampa, Florida. Herrera made his mixed martial arts debut in 2011 and had 13 fights across a seven-year career, with four of those coming in the UFC. He made his UFC debut in 2015 against Ray Bog, losing by unanimous, unanimous decision, but he went on to beat Joe B. Sanchez in his next trip to the Octagon. And that's all on the news. But before we go, let's take a look again at some of the major stories. Organized labor insists on May 31st deadline for new minimum wage. Niger and the U.S. agree troops withdrawal completion by September 15. Top court bats former President Zuma from South Africa's election. Send your eyewitness report to the WhatsApp number on the screen and follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. You can watch us live on DSTV channel 422. Star Times Channel 274, Apple TV, and YouTube. Many thanks for watching. I am Adebola Adeduba.